What's going on guys? This is Chris from Terrestrial Imaging here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to calibrate your P1 camera. Now, the P1 camera comes from DJI non-calibrated because they don't know which lens that you're gonna be using. So if you hold down this button over here, you can actually detach the lens from your P1 and reattach other lenses as you see fit. Now, every time you detach or reattach a lens and the first time you get your P1 camera, you should perform a camera calibration. Now, why would we wanna do that? The P1, again, doesn't know which lens you're gonna be using. So you need a property file and you need to take that file and save it on your P1. Now that property file lets it know the exact center point of the lens as well as many other intrinsic properties. So we're gonna get into how to actually collect that file, how to put it on the P1, and then from there, your P1 will be calibrated. And remember, the reason we're doing all of this is to make sure that the P1 is as accurate as possible. So to calibrate our P1, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a flight route. So let's click the flight route button over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit create route. So you have two options here. One, you could hit mapping and then do a smart oblique mission. Or two, you can just do an oblique mission. The end goal is to get enough pictures to create a 3D reconstruction. So you need to do smart oblique or oblique. So I'm just going to do an oblique mission. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is on the little chevrons on the top right of the controller, I'm gonna expand that. I'm gonna select my camera as the P1 and the 35 millimeter lens. Next, I'm just gonna zoom in to where I am on the map. Let's see, keep going. Typically it like auto zooms in for you, but I got spotty connection. Cool. All right, so we're zoomed all the way in and where we are, Next, I'm gonna click on the map to create my mapping area. So let's extend out a bit. And the goal is to keep getting your area larger until you have a minimum of 100 photos. All right, so now I see I have 139 photos that are gonna be taken. So the next thing I'm gonna do on the right side of the controller is I'm gonna change my gimbal pitch to be 60, so negative 60. The default is 45, but with 45, what happens is sometimes the legs of the drone will be in some of the shots. So if you change it to negative 60, you'll get no legs in your images. So as I zoom down a little, or scroll down a little bit, I'm gonna keep everything here pretty much the same. Um, you know, you can change this as you need to, but I'm gonna leave it all as the defaults. Um, you know, change your course angle as needed. So if you need to change the direction that the drone is flying, by all means, go ahead. So I'm just gonna leave it this way. And everything on here looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is hit save. I'm gonna close that, perfect. Everything looks good to go. So what we're gonna do next is on the top right of the controller, I have the three dots. I'm gonna expand that, go to RTK. And then from here, I'm gonna enable RTK. So if I scroll down, Boom, I'm connected to RTK now. Now, if you're using an N-Trip device, um, or if rather an N-Trip account, or any third-party base station that's kind of you know, broad, broadcasting data on local N-Trip, you can connect that way as well. Um, the goal here is to have RTK, so that way your data is tighter and more accurate. But one thing I wanna note is if you're using the DJI DRTK2, go into Advanced Setup. Um, the default password here should be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Okay, it'll get you in there. What you'll see is if you adjust the coordinates here, you can change the longitude, latitude, and ellipsoidal height of a known point. So if you're on a known point, you wanna do this, but in this video, I don't have a known point, so I'm not gonna be modifying this. This is just gonna make sure that your, um, you know, the data that you're collecting has the best accuracy that you could possibly get. All right, so we have our RTK connected and we're all good to go. So, just to like kind of like take a step back, we have our mapping mission created with over 100 images. We have RTK on, which should be in a known point. And then we have our gimbal um, set to negative 60, not negative 45, that way we're not getting any legs in there. 
Now, one other thing that you would wanna make sure you're doing is that you wanna take images or fly in an area that has a lot of unique structures. So like a lot of buildings or a lot of 3D objects, height variations, so that way you can get the best calibration um, parameters as possible. So once everything looks good, what we're gonna do then is just hit play. We're gonna execute all five routes. You know, check over your pre-flight checklist stuff. Everything looks good to me. Um, I see that I have a home point set. Everything is good to go. I see RTK connected in the top of the screen. So I'm gonna hit next. Then from here, I'm going to upload my flight mission. And then when you're good to go, we will hit start. So I'm gonna let this mission carry out. And then after this, we'll go to DJI Terra, process it, and then get our calibration file. So to start the processing of our data, first we're going to click New Mission on the bottom left. From here, we're then going to select Visible Light. Next, we're just going to name our mission, so I'll say P1 Calibration Mission, select OK. And now on the top right over here, we're going to select Add Folder. From here, I'm going to look for my folder that contains all of the images and I am going to select it. Now from here, it will automatically populate all those little camera points on the map for us. So from here, I'm just gonna select 3D model. I'm gonna keep the resolution as high. The scene, I'm gonna select as normal. Um, for computation method, we're gonna leave it as standalone computation. And in advanced, we really don't have to change any of the settings here because we're just exporting this to get a calibration file. So lastly, I'm just going to hit start reconstruction. And then I'm going to hit OK. So we're going to wait for this reconstruction to finish. And then after that, we're going to export it. And then we're going to grab that calibration file. All right, so now that our reconstruction is complete, I'm going to press the home button on the top left of the screen. And from there, I am going to export our P1 calibration mission. I am going to deselect photos in 3D model, just exporting the error triangulation results. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to pick the location where I want to save this. So for now, I'm just going to save it where I had all those images. I'm then going to open that location, unzip the report, go to AT for error triangulation data. And then I'm going to go to port. And then I am going to have my SFN report.json. So this is the file that we're going to be looking for. And this is the file that we're going to be putting on our P1's SD card and leaving it there permanently, or rather until we change out the lens. So if I had my SD card on the list on the bottom, I would just take this file, drag it into the SD card, take the SD card off the computer, pop it into the P1, and my P1 is all calibrated. All right, guys, so that's how you calibrate your P1. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave any comments down below, and I'll be sure to answer those. And if you guys are looking to get an M300 or a P1 camera, feel free to reach out to us online at trustshowimaging.com or give us a call at 1-800-359-0530. Thanks for watching.